Hi everyone, I'm super excited to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, my name is Andrew, I'm the founder of uh, Algonel. We are an uh, algorithmic trading startup in the foreign exchange market. Uh, together with a couple of my friends, we have been developing uh, proprietary trading algorithms for the past uh, four years. Um, uh, my research is about um, Bayesian networks and data mining applications in the foreign exchange market. I deal with a, a lot of trend classification and uh, zigzag indicators. So uh, if you're interested in uh, this stuff, uh, we have published our production data, anonymized. Uh, in Kaggle, there is a simple kernel out there. You can check this one out. Uh, this is a paper I published together with my academic supervisor, uh, Dr. Mai Herman, on Bayesian networks, because we love Bayesian networks. We use them in our ensemble of uh, classifiers. So my goal here is to make a simple introduction to the world of algorithmic trading in Python. Uh, I'm going to share you with you some frameworks and tools. Uh, I'm going to show you my uh, ongoing uh, submission for Numerai. And uh, Numerai is a kind of a Kaggle competition with uh, weekly rounds. Uh, in, in a way, it's just a um, hedge, fu hedge fund of uh, data scientists. Uh, I'm going to show you a simple trading algorithm uh, based on machine learning for Quantopian. And most importantly, I would love to provoke you and make you inspired about creating alphas, creating trading strategies and just uh, invest in your money in a more sophisticated way. So what is algorithmic trading? Uh, I believe most of you are familiar with this, but let's recap. So basically it's the automated execution of some trading algorithm. It could be something uh, very complicated. It could be something very simple. Uh, well, in a way, just could uh, invest in some index like uh, ETF that follows uh, the S&P 500 or some taste indices and you would probably be okay or you could try to create the edge. So algorithmic trading is all about alpha. Alpha is your strategy, is your technical idea, uh, is your edge. It's how, uh, how you're able to, on average, make more money than some index. Um, so we also differentiate algorithmic trading by high frequency trading and low frequency trading. Uh, plus, we differentiate by technical and fundamental analysis. So technical analysis is all about price data and historical analysis of price data. Uh, fundamental analysis is all about the news, um, uh, politics, etc. And uh, the ultimate systems are usually the fusion of both. So once you combine technical indicators and fundamental analysis, um, it's the best, yes. Uh, Klaus read this book by Paul Wilmot where uh, he... Uh was a very pro the quantitative approach as opposed to the technical approach. Uh, does that factor into any of your model? Uh, kind of, but we are more uh, oriented uh, on the technical analysis. So we believe there is a mark of, a mark of property in the market, and uh, we try to model um, <coughs> the markets in terms of whether the price is going up or down. So we are more to technical analysis. Um, so how do you actually make money in algorithmic trading? So this is a nice summary by Max Dumm. And by the way, a lot of references are presented uh, at the end of this presentation. I'm going to show you them. How so much money what? How much money hmm. Sorry? How much money to, 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 to succeed? How much money? A lot of money. Think about uh, high recall with a lot of uh, positions, a lot of trades, uh, the law of large numbers. You will have to have um, you will have to make a lot of positions to, to gain uh, profits. So this is a bit complicated. Um, so let's uh, target model-based, directional and arbitrage. So model-based and directional, think about them as uh, classification and regression problems. So the model-based, uh, you are building a regression model and you are predicting the next close price for some asset. Directional is basically a classification problem. So you are deciding whether the asset is going up or down. Arbitrage is just um, exploiting the market. It's the ability to buy and sell the same stuff within different arenas. And once you have even the minor change in the price, uh, the cumulative sum of these minor differences uh, is a lot of money. Uh, we have more complicated ways to make money, such th as uh, relative value, which is uh, pair trading. Uh, you can sometimes buy and sell the same or um, assets that are co-integrated and correlated. Uh, market making, you can sometimes get within the difference between the bid and ask. 
And carry trading is extremely popular in the FX market. You just take in loans, uh, loan, sorry, uh, of one currency, and you are expecting that currency to go up, and um, also take the advantage of the interest rate. Uh, so, as you can see, as data scientists, we can uh, pretty easily uh, target model-based and directional, right? Once again, classification and regression. Uh, so, how, how does the uh, data look? Uh, so, usually the tuple looks like this. You will have some daytime, obviously. Open, high, low, close vectors. Uh, sometimes you will have volume. In the FX market, you do not actually have volume because, well, there is no centralized uh, bank or uh, authority. Uh, in the FX market, uh, sorry, in the stocks market, uh, volume sometimes could be uh, the volume in dollars, like uh, how much w was traded that day. And the adjusted close is a kind of a normalized price because uh, stocks have uh, dividend splits and uh, stuff like that. So this, uh, this is one of the most beautiful things about algorithmic trading. Think about it. The feature engineering here is, is, is complete art. Like, this is your raw data, and from this one, you can create a lot of technical indicators and meta features and aggregations, a lot of cool stuff. So, as a retail trader, uh, where do you actually can uh, get some data? So, there are a couple of sources, uh, Yahoo Finance um, and Quandle. Quandle have an amazing uh, API. Uh, it's kind of a wrapper for various data sets. Uh, you have uh, stocks, futures, uh, historical price data for uh, currencies. Uh, if you are more interested in the FX market, uh, so MetaTrader 5 would probably be your uh, best friend because you can uh, use flat files and write that uh, data down. Uh, Quantopian, which is um, a unified uh, platform, I'm gonna show you an example for Quantopian, also provides uh, proprietary data. So you cannot download the data, but you can analyze it, create some uh, notebooks and create uh, trading strategies. So, some tools. It's enough for the retail trader. Uh, if you, 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 you said you're, uh, you're, you use Macoet so Macoet property tools. It's <coughs> amount of features is so small. Yeah, but once again, uh, you can aggregate uh, all of the indicators are based on some period. So you can basically create infinite number of features. Uh, it's, it's limitless. So some tools. Uh, please note that Pandas, yes. Oh, you are entering into the idea of our startup to make a crowdfunded hedge fund. So mm -hmm. all the people, though. Not going to make it commercial, but speak to me. Uh, <laughs> so, some tools. Please note that Pandas originally was uh, developed by AQR, which is a huge investment management fund. Like, uh, so, all of the, all of the functions like uh, present change, shift, and cumulative sum are, well, uh, targeting quantitative finance. Uh, if you're interested in uh, technical analysis, you have the TA Lib. Uh, and a couple of open source projects by uh, Quantopian, like uh, Zip, Zipline, Pyfolio, and AlphaLens, which are already integrated mm -hmm. in a way in uh, Quantopian. Uh, so what is Quantopian actually? So uh, I, I would definitely recommend if you're starting with algorithmic trading, uh, this is your best place to start. Uh, this, this is the uh, largest uh, quant community in the world currently. Uh, so it's a platform as a service that provides you the ability to analyze data, create Python notebooks, analyze historical data, uh, backtest it, and eventually even connect your um, paper trading account and real money. Uh, they also host ongoing uh, competitions uh, that last uh, six months. Uh, and if your, if your results are good enough, you can even get funded. Um, and on the other spectrum of algorithmic trading and well, quantitative finance, you can find Numerai. And by the way, who is here familiar with Numerai? Yes. So uh, Numerai is a kind of a hedge fund of data scientists. <coughs> they use one meta model, which is a combination of your submissions. Uh, they trade Bitcoin, and as, as always, if your, mod if your models are good enough and you generalize well, you are getting paid uh, Bitcoin. And recently, like a month ago, 
they have introduced uh, Numerairi. And this Numerairi is a new cryptocurrency, uh, which is for the mutual um, interest of the community to, to get uh, better models. So uh, if you are making a lot of submissions, which are uh, not excellent, but they are good, you're getting more Numerairi because uh, the fort, your fort, and the mutual effort is, is higher. So this is very important. So by uh, solving a binary classification problem, you can just make money in quantitative finance. This is uh, very interesting stuff. And please know that uh, they claim that um, 10,000 of dollars today will become millions in the following years. And think about it for a second. Uh, Bitcoin, a couple of years ago, um, nobody actually believed in it. And now uh, Bitcoin is almost gold. So please take this one seriously. Um, I'm going to show you a simple uh, example for numerized submission. Um, so now for the examples. So this is my ongoing solution for numerai. Um, nothing fancy here. Uh, so, just uh, let's go over that quickly. Um, so, basically, I load some data, extract ID. Uh, this is a binary classification problem. The submission is in probabilities, uh, the metric is uh, log loss. Uh, so, one issue here, as you can see, we have pretty much the same uh, number of uh, the distribution of the classes is pretty much, pretty much the same. One uh, very well-known problem here is uh, the divergence in the train set and the test set. So there is a difference. So what we usually do in such cases is we try, we try to build a classifier um, and separate train data and test data. This is what I do here. As, and as you can see, we can pretty much easily uh, separate train data from test data. So uh, basically what it tells is um, it violates IID, right? So I'm making some modeling and then my test data is completely different. Uh, so what I, tr what, what I try to do here is to make a classifier and show uh, how... You don't shuffle the data. You just want the path to give you the same and you work it. Uh, didn't get you? Even if you shuffle the data, you still can separate the train test and test set. But if you shuffle somehow, you also have the, the effect of some sort of confusion and confusion. Um, you don't have a timestamp here. You do not actually know that the data is time series. It's probably time series, but I think you get it uh, already shuffled. Bless you. So this is how the do data looks like. You can see it's between 0, 1 and a binary target. Where is that coming from? This is uh, your uh, competition uh, data. This is what you download from Numerai each and every week. And your target is a binary class. Do you know what you're doing? No, of course not. From the probabilities, it seems like being uh, solving the problem of uh, whether the price of the Bitcoin is going up or down. Never I uh, do not officially talk about it, but they claim that uh, they are using this data for trading Bitcoin. And no one knows actually what is the time frame. Um, so it's kind of a kegel. Um, so after trying to separate the train and test data, so you can see that and taking uh, the 75th percentile of the data. And well, now I have pretty much a <laughs> better picture of the data. And then the region, uh, the usual stuff. So, yeah. Shuffle them and, and 
divide differently afterwards? Uh, I add a new uh, target variable, which I call the train, like here. And then I uh, just um, label the train data as being train and test data as test, without the class variable, of course. Okay. And then I try to separate the data. And I take uh, the instances that have the probability of being in the test data set. So, so you don't use all your data? Of course, of course, correct. 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 This is a known a known issue here. So this is what I do. So and then the usual stuff. Uh, want to so some feature engineering, some data preprocessing. You know, uh, feature importance. Um, the usual stacking. Nothing fancy here. Uh, cross validation and out of fold predictions. Uh, eventually, the data looks like uh, this. So you have a lot of classifiers and you basically uh, register the probabilities for both of the classes. Uh, you have a column for the outcome itself, as you can see here. And this one goes into the stacker. Uh, logistic regression models uh, are usually the best to use. Sometimes uh, some neural nets are uh, performing better. And eventually what I have here is, as you can see, a cross-validation of uh, score of uh, 6928 uh, and then I go to numeri it looks like this so here I basically make my submission uh, as you can see number one uh, currently holds uh, 692 so the battle here is about the fourth digit sometimes it's even the fifth and eventually top 100 participants are in the money uh, and each and every week you are getting um, you're getting paid in uh, dollars and most importantly is if you hold this position for a uh, normalized year uh, you that this is the money that you will get okay so once again it's important to note as they claim that currently uh, profits of ten thousands will become millions because this is a unique stuff uh, there is no one uh, that is doing stuff like Numeri, and I believe that uh, more Numeri-like sites will appear. So now I, I want to show you a simple trading algorithm <coughs> for Quantopia. So this is the Quantopian framework. This is how it looks like. Uh, as you can see, this is a complete IDE. Okay, you can backtest it here. Let's run a simple backtest. Um, and meanwhile, I'm gonna. Ooh. Yeah, so this is a backtest of the trading algorithm. So let's go over that uh, briefly. So as you can see, this is a complete IDE. Plus I have a research environment that looks like um, notebooks, right? This is within Quantopia. Here I have access to proprietary data by Quantopia. A lot of good stuff, a lot of, uh, you know, like the basic stuff, Numerai, uh, Pandas, Klib. Uh, here, here I just import some stuff. So you can see I already have scikit-learn. Um, I get some data. Um, here I create a class variable. Basically my idea here is to, uh, once again, uh, the market holds a uh, Markov property, so I'm trying to um, classify the next trend, whether the price is going up or down uh, by the previous bar. Uh, the data I have here, as you can see, open, high, low, close, and the daytime. Um, here I create the class variable, add some features, feature engineering uh, by using technical indicators, and simple moving averages and stuff like that. Um, so then I create my trading list. So here I select my uh, assets that I would love to trade. So you can see Facebook, uh, Facebook Amazon, uh, Nasdaq, Apple, Home Depot, and Visa. Um, so make some 
filtering, sometimes you cannot trade stuff. Uh, you can basically make here anything. You can schedule stuff, you can make some pre-processing before the market starts. Uh, you can decide um, when to trade, like is, is it going to be the close of the day, the open of the market, stuff like that. So you can see that here I make, make a, a schedule uh, to trade one hour after, after a market open. So here, as you can see, I train. Um, here I train my classifier. I make my classifier here, fit it, uh, set it aside. This is a dict, and uh, then. When market opens, uh, I decide, I get a probability for the outcome. And uh, if this probability is higher than some threshold, I'm basically getting into the market. Uh, this is how I check for signals. Uh, in this particular stuff, I decided to use one-sided strategy, which means only buy. And once, once the signal is uh, weak, I'm just staying out of the market. It's like chess. Uh, it's a zwang. Sometimes it's better not to trade. So this is the case here. And eventually some trading function, you can, once again, you can take your uh, balance, you can make some uh, sophisticated stuff here. I decided to trade just uh, constant volume. And eventually uh, the backtest of this algorithm looks like this. So as you can see, uh, here we have a lot of metrics, alpha, beta, uh, sharp ratio, think about them like, you know, like AUC, precision recall, this is, there is a mapping between them. So basically it says that within um, a lower um, volatility compared to the index, which is PI, uh, a very well-known uh, ETF that follows the S&P 500, uh, within um, lower risk, I basically made 70% more on average than the index, eventually doubling my investment. But you're so, waiting on Yes. Uh, no, uh, the benchmark is usually something that is well established, like uh, a lot of years, like uh, SPY, I think, exists. Uh, usually you use uh, in indices such as uh, SPY, uh, DXY, um, QQQ, and stuff that is um, uh, based uh, a lot more years than um, companies, even yeah, like, I guess, like Facebook. The reason why you chose to work on, uh, on trading Facebook is because like, we have the intuition that of course, of yeah. course, it's it's my next slide. Uh, there is a lot of <laughs> there is a lot of uh, philosophical uh, stuff in this, and I would love to uh, make a summary here. Uh, think about it, it's a sad problem, of course. So this is here, I'm gonna talk uh, about this in a minute. So let me just recap, what, uh, what is the real deal? Uh, start simple, start with simple idea, the data is out there, it's pretty simple to get. Quandle is free to use, you can get uh, historical data for much of the uh, equities. Uh, develop some alphas, uh, be careful because the data is time series, you know, like the regular stuff, out of uh, sample. Um, so you will have to compare your performance to some benchmarks uh, like uh, the SPY. W once again, because SPY is uh, the usual uh, uh, index for uh, equities. Um, paper traded, well, try it on demo accounts. Okay, so if you are not able to make money on paper trade, uh, so you won't succeed. Then you can live trade it with small amounts. Uh, you can connect interactive brokers with Quantopian and E-Trade also. Uh, grow your risk and repeat this flow well because uh, alphas tend to disappear. Uh, uh, market inefficiencies disappear all the time. You will have to reinvent the wheel, uh, try new stuff, new trading uh, ideas uh, all the time. So in a, in a, in a philosophical aspect of this, uh, it's, it's a sad problem, okay? It's a non-deterministic polynomial uh, problem. But uh, please know that we actually have some oracles here. We have uh, amazing traders, so it's, it's solvable, but it takes years to master. So uh, in a way, uh, 
there's a lot of resources uh, out there uh, regarding trading. <laughs> um, great stuff by Coursera, as always. Um, some podcasts. Um, you can even try to trade by yourself, see how it goes by investor, mobile app, amazing stuff. Uh, quantitative finance, if you're more serious into the Python and in, into the um, algorithmic aspect of this, I strongly recommend the computational investment by uh, Georgia Tech, by uh, Tucker Bolch. Uh, Max Damas is basically uh, the, the best paper on algorithmic trading. It's an amazing uh, summary. Uh, some tools, and uh, that's all, folks. Questions? Yeah. In your back testing, it assumes that you get every trade you go for, and you have no way of knowing the impact of your trade on the market. So, how do you. Um, depends on uh, how large is the volume. It's a good aspect. Um, so, if you are a hedge fund, uh, you are probably in, uh, in problems. But uh, there are a lot of uh, methods to avoid it, like uh, VWAP, TWAP. You can slice your trade if you are making some big trades, you can slice them down uh, to separate them and stuff like that. So yeah. what you showed here, if I understand correctly, it's not high frequency. No, of course not. You do like on a daily basis, like uh, what is the time frame? Daily, hourly, four hours. Um, not a lot of trades within microseconds and stuff like that. No. Did, did you guys try to do like um, not like without really understanding the, the features, like taking the, the raw data as um, we do usually with images through deep networks and just try to play with them until it's something is working? Yeah, we have more than uh, 1,400 features mm -hmm. and usually we left out with 10 to 20 features. So the feature selection, of course, is a, a vital part. What classifiers do you use? Oh. A great uh, combination. Uh, the real stuff, um, the usual deal, um, random forest, logistic regressions, couple of uh, algorithms uh, uh, for Bayesian networks, uh, various uh, search algorithms within Bayesian networks because this is all about probability. So uh, probabilistic approach to this is very powerful. Uh, and sometimes even stuff like uh, naive base. Uh, so a combination, something like 10 classifiers, nothing pretty special. Bayesian models? Yeah, of course. Bayesian networks. Uh, this is the paper that we have published. So. Can you tell us a bit about your company? Uh, we are a couple of um, um, quants analysts. Uh, we have been dealing with uh, this stuff for the past four years. We trade with our own money. We have multiple uh, trading accounts within uh, FX uh, brokers. And uh, currently we are uh, uh, trading with uh, interactive brokers uh, for equities. We are constantly looking for investment and uh, new alpha ideas and stuff like that. And as I mentioned, uh, our goal is to make basically a hedge fund, a crowdfunded hedge fund, because uh, anyone have a little bit of money. And if you combine this money, you can have a lot of money and trade with that. So this is our vision. That's it. Thanks. Thank you.